And welcome back, everybody. Another edition here of the Auburn Undercover Podcast on the 24-7 Sports Network. My name is Nathan King. Happy Monday morning to everybody. Joined here today by Mark Murphy talking about, of course, Auburn basketball um, is now the postseason. And the regular season couldn't have ended better in terms of the last day of the regular season for Auburn. They pick up, of course, um, signature win, best win of the season when you look at the, the metrics over the net number three team in the country and it was one we've been talking about for a long time Auburn had to have in order to secure a spot in the NCAA tournament they beat Tennessee 79 to 70 on Saturday inside Neville Arena and Mark finally some pressure off of this team it doesn't get any easier and we'll talk about that you know moving forward of course in the tournament it won't and then uh this week in Nashville they got a pretty uh they got, they got a pretty tough draw as the seven seed but these last three games Bruce Pearl talked about it over and over again the players talked about it over and over again. They knew it was daunting at Kentucky, at Alabama, and then at home against Tennessee. But you had to have one of them to shore up your resume as an at-large candidate in the NCAA tournament. Maybe in some years this resume wouldn't get you in, but this is this is a little bit weaker of a field. And a, and a quality win like this over a top-five team in the net mark um, certainly seems like the pressure can now be off this team. Um, you know, Anything can happen, but you look around the country at all the bracketologies, you look at the seed lines and everything, really seems like this is the one that that punched Auburn's ticket to, to March Madness. Yeah, I agree, Nathan. The uh, It's pretty interesting. They finished up with the number two net team, Alabama, on the road, and then the number three team, Tennessee, at home. And, uh, you know, it's a double-edged sword, you know, playing in the SEC. It's really challenging. But, I mean, there's golden opportunities out there if you'll go out and play well and win and uh, you can get yourself in the NCAA tournament, there might be as many as eight SEC teams make the field, uh, particularly if Mississippi State, who's probably on the bubble right now, does a couple, um, plays a couple good games up in Nashville. So we'll see about that. But uh, uh, I'm really interested to see how Auburn plays in Nashville. Um, it's a team that, when it's playing well on defense, like it did on Saturday, can be difficult to beat. It's a team that when somebody comes off the bench or two or three guys come off the bench and, and contribute with either rebounding, defense, or scoring, they become more difficult to beat. And, and, and you know, I've talked about it before. When Wendell Green plays well, it's a different basketball team. So uh, you and I are going to be there in Nashville. Looking forward to it. There's really – not much like a conference tournament in college sports for the general excitement. Uh, in the SEC case, you'll have 14 fan bases there, and everybody starts even as far as uh, a chance to get to the NCAA tournament. And uh, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year, too. I mean, I'm a, a basketball junkie. I'll watch it. Hey, I was watching the Southern Conference semifinal games yesterday, and they were very exciting. One of them went into double overtime. Watch the Patriot League double overtime semifinal game. Very, very interesting. Watching some of the strategies of these coaches. And some of these leagues have some really good young coaches that we're going to see in Power 5 leagues uh, down the road, most likely. So, uh, yeah, uh, Auburn's sort of been a feast or famine type team in the SEC tournament in recent years. So, uh, uh, you know, there's certainly an opportunity to uh, go to – to Nashville and do some good things the way the bracket's set up for the Tigers. But uh, I don't know how much they're going to be able to improve their seed line. To me, Nathan, the important thing is try to get out of the 8-9 seed line so you don't end up playing a number one or number two seed if you get to the second round. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. You almost look at it at this point. If you're Auburn, you'd, you'd be happier taking a 10 seed because um, then you, right, you only have to beat a – only, but you know, beat a seven and a three – um, as opposed to you look at right now, some of the projections as Auburn as an eight or a nine, you know, your second round draw is like Kansas or Houston. And that is, <laughs> that's, that's pretty difficult to get to the second weekend. Yeah. Houston is the last team they want to see yep. uh, in the bracket. I would say um, Kansas uh, sort of a hot and cold team, you know, who knows what Kansas is going to do. Cause uh, if they're not shooting well, they're certainly a beatable team this year, but uh you know, you made a good point about this year all around college basketball. There's not a super team out there. Maybe UCLA is playing the best right now of anybody late in the season. Um, and 
you probably want to avoid them if at all possible. But uh, I mean, who knows uh, if Auburn has to play a number three seed. I mean, they just played one Tennessee, Pro Tennessee's probably a three seed and, and did quite well. And they almost beat Tennessee up at Knoxville um, came down to last second shot on a, a three that Wendell took and it looked like he got fouled and it wasn't called. So uh, definitely about as wide open of an NCAA tournament as I remember, but uh, SEC tournament, I think Alabama has got to be the favorite, but I think Kentucky's 1B right now. The Wildcats are playing about as well as any team in the SEC. We know they've had the talent. You know, they were picked to win the SEC in the preseason. Some people picked them to win the national championship. But in my eyes, Kentucky's underperformed, even taking into consideration that Oscar Sheway was not full speed to start the season. But he's he is now, and uh, Kentucky's playing pretty well. Yeah, I wanted to touch real quick on on the win over Tennessee on Saturday. Second most points Tennessee has allowed all season. Um, Bruce Pearl said at postgame, hanging 79 on this year's Tennessee team is is no small feat. Um, you mentioned how important Wendell Green was in this game. He tied a season high um, with seven, or excuse, not 79 points, 24 points, um, shoots 8 of 14 from the floor. Really just you know more than his scoring. Um, you know, he's able to affect the game in a lot of other ways. For me, Mark, the big thing about this, uh, until Auburn was able to close it out down the stretch, which of course that's been what's what's held them out of these kinds of games. They've had leads against quad one teams all season long um, and haven't been able to hold on to many of them. So, of course, that was the big storyline down the stretch. They got enough stops. They made enough shots in the final final few minutes of the game. Um, but every time Tennessee had a run here, it was like you'd, you'd look up and they were 7-0 run, you know, 7-2 run, 6-0 six, six run. Every time Tennessee was able to gather at least a little bit of momentum, Auburn punched back in this one. Um, and they, you know, quietly went on runs of their own. Um, and so, you know, I, I just think it was probably either one of, if not the best overall game Auburn has played all season when you consider the uh, the quality of the opponent. And and the thing was, Mark, it was senior day and Auburn seniors, all of them, um, including Lior Berman, played a, uh, played a really big role in this win for the Tigers. First nine points in the game were scored by seniors and, uh, and, you know, throw in Zep Jasper, whose defense on the SCOBY, late in the game was really important because he was the guy who was the hot hand for uh, for Tennessee and a real veteran guy um, played for four years and been a key player for Tennessee and, and with Ziegler the point guard out uh, the Scobie had a bigger ball handling role and uh, Zepp just you know lived up to his nickname of the honey badger and just gave it everything he got and uh, you know when he fouled out there late at the end of the game he looked like somebody who had extended every bit of energy possible playing in a game. And I think Zepp was in for 24 minutes and he was in at closing time, which is not the way they've been playing most of the season. So, uh, yeah, I was happy for Zepp. As I think most Auburn fans know, he's one of the really good people to come through the Auburn program over the years. And, uh, you know, he's 100% bought into Auburn. And, uh, you know, it meant a lot to him to win that senior day game. And I think it meant a lot to the other seniors because they all played well, as you mentioned, Nathan. Yeah, I think maybe the biggest maybe the biggest crowd reaction of the entire season um was a was a fast break play. Katie Johnson saves it out of bounds to uh to Jalen Williams, who then finds Leor Berman, who gets up for the first dunk I've ever seen him put down in in his Auburn career. Maybe, maybe he's done it before. I haven't even seen him dunk that much at practice before. So um, that play certainly, uh, certainly got the fans off their feet. And then like we talked about earlier, um, Mark, you mentioned Zepp Jasper's defense, Tennessee goes the final six thirteen of this game without a made shot. And, you know, in the post game, Bruce was like, you know, everyone wants to talk about, hitting shots. Everyone wants to talk about, oh, we missed the game winning shot. You know, who's taking the last shot? He said, you don't win games without getting stops. And that has been so crucial for this team all season long. You think back to, I, th I think about at Texas A&M, at Vanderbilt. Those are two games where it looked like Auburn had a really good chance with maybe three or four minutes left, didn't get enough stops down the stretch. The other team scored, the other team got to the free throw line. Um, so like you mentioned, Zepp Jasper's defense late in this game cannot go, uh, cannot go underappreciated. And then on the other end, um, I believe Alan Flanagan. Yeah, it was Alan Flanagan, J Jalen Williams, and uh, Wendell Green scored Auburn's final 23 points 
in this game. So they really helped them close out their uh, they're down the stretch. And like you mentioned, Mark, earlier, um, you know, this is a wide open. This is a wide open NCAA tournament field. Um, it's also an SEC tournament that I think could get could get really exciting because you look at what Alabama has done recently. They're certainly the best team in the league, but they've had their inconsistencies. And it's really been ever since the Brandon Miller stuff started. Um, I agree that Kentucky is is probably your 1B. Um, they just lost at home a couple games ago to to Vanderbilt without Liam Robbins. So, um, you know, there's there's probably not a super team right now in the SEC either with the way Alabama is uh, is currently playing. So with the results of Saturday's games, um, Auburn couldn't finish any lower than number six or excuse me, number seven. They couldn't finish lower than seven. They could have been the sixth seed. That would have required Ole Miss to beat Mizzou on the road. Um, a couple other things would have had to happen. But, you know, that that Ole Miss almost almost did it and they almost did it. Um, Mm -hmm. And Auburn, of course, for an easier on paper, an easier first game would have liked to have been um, the sixth seed. But the the 10 seed for Auburn to play in that first round, it could have been Florida, could have been Mississippi State and it could have been Arkansas. It was almost Florida because LSU was up 10 in the second half. (laughs) LSU has been the worst team in the league all year. um, And they also showed why they've been the worst team in the league because they couldn't close out a game where they (laughs) they had the lead most of the way. Um, so it ends up being Arkansas mark in this 10 seed and, uh, Arkansas is one of the most talented 10 seeds you're going to find in any, in any conference tournament anywhere. Of course, Auburn beat them back in January, um, 79 or excuse me, 72 to 59 in that game. Wendell green had a great game. Then you'll remember Auburn used that zone defense because Bruce Pearl was like, we're just not big enough to defend these guys. We're not big enough. We're not lengthy enough. So they, that zone really bothered Arkansas. Um, and a lot like Auburn, Mark, Arkansas has just had a brutal schedule this year. They haven't beaten a ton of good teams. And like we were talking about before we got we got rolling, um, you know, their, their five star freshman, Nick Smith, whom whom Auburn, you know, wanted as a as a recruit. He's back and he gives you a prolific, you know, scoring guard. But they're two and five to end the season in, in, in games since since he's joined the lineup. And so you know, it's definitely a dangerous team as a 10 seed. It's definitely a, a team nobody wanted to see in the SEC tournament. At the same time, they've been playing pretty inconsistent basketball. A lot like Auburn, they've 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 not really been able to find consistency game over game. You know, the last couple of years, Arkansas has gotten hot and played well late in the season, and uh, currently they're not playing that way right now. So, uh, you know, it made sense to zone them up in the first game because they, you know, Davis is a good outside shooter, but he's not real consistent. It's a point guard. Boy, he's, he can't shoot outside for Arkansas. And, you know, they're really athletic. Um, they can get up and down the court uh, very well. They're they're good on defense. Uh, they're, they're a pretty good rebounding team. But, uh, I, you know, I won't be surprised to see Auburn, you know, make Arkansas prove they can beat the Tigers with three-point shots. So it'll be something to watch. And, uh, um, you know, I agree. You make a point about Arkansas being a 10 seed. That's kind of crazy because this team, I think they're not an 18 in the net or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, it would be if Auburn can get the win, uh, it's certainly a, a slight resume enhancer for the Tigers. And, uh, but yeah, I think it's pretty much a toss up game up in Nashville. Auburn's going to have to play really well to win this thing. And uh, I think. I think there's a good chance Auburn will play well. So, um, I you know, playing Florida would have been easier uh, for certain. Playing Mississippi State would probably have been easier too, even though Tolu Smith is just having an absolutely great season. You know, Auburn can probably match up with him pretty well um, inside. And, our, and Mississippi State just doesn't shoot well enough to be that big a threat. But – They can really play defense and they play tempo type basketball, which can be effective in in conference tournaments. So uh, I'm really looking forward to getting up to Nashville and seeing what happens, Nathan. Yeah, this has all the markings of a of a great first game for Auburn in terms of the level of competition. And, and, you know, there are advantages both ways, whether they had drawn Florida or whether they had because like midway through the day that they can no longer draw Mississippi State. So it's either going to be Florida or Arkansas. Like you mentioned, Mark, you know, you and we talked about this earlier. It's kind of it's just gravy at this point for for Auburn. You would think one would think we're kind of taking that, you know, projection at the moment that that Auburn has probably gone ahead and locked down and at large 
Um, and so all you're trying to do is is possibly, like you mentioned, get off that 8-9 line, maybe. Um, we've seen in the past that the SEC tournament, the conference tournaments in general, you know, ask Texas A&M last season, you know, it, it, it doesn't always have a massive effect on where you're seated. But at the same time, this is this is a weak field overall. Um, Arkansas, yeah, you're right. They're, they're at least, I can't remember exactly where they are at the moment, um, but they're top 20 in the net. Um, and so yeah, that's, I think that's, it's pretty sure it's 18. Well, that was yesterday. Um, but I think, you know, talking about Texas A&M, they were playing really well last year. And I think in a normal season last year, they would have done enough to get in the NCAA tournament. But I think the committee um, used them as an example of how not to schedule. And, you know, Texas A&M played an extremely weak pre-conference schedule and, and, and didn't play particularly well, uh, you know, before they started the SEC. And, uh, and I think the committee was making a statement. And then Texas A&M went out and rescheduled a fairly weak pre-conference um, slate again this year. And, uh, uh, but they've done way too much uh, during the conference schedule to worry about you know, making the NCAA tournament. So, uh, um, yeah, Florida would have been a, probably a better draw for Auburn without Colin Castleton. The Gators uh, are an athletic team, but I don't think they're a threat to do much in the SEC tournament. Uh, you know, they might pull off an upset or two, but, uh, um, you know, Arkansas has got the depth and the talent to make a run. So Auburn's uh, – and have to bring its A game up there. And when Auburn's played really well, it's been a, a fun team to watch this year. And it's been the defense. It's been a big part of the equation, scoring points off transition uh, through turnovers forced. And that was one of the keys to success against Tennessee. Uh, Auburn dominated the fast break point statistic. Things have only gotten uncompetitive for Auburn a couple times this season. You think about when that happened. At home against Texas A&M, Texas A&M took its biggest leads because it, they made six of their first nine three-pointers in that game. So that just put Auburn way behind the eight ball. Like we're talking about with Arkansas, doesn't necessarily seem like the kind of team that could do that. You never know. Um, and then in Kentucky, that home crowd and them just playing on the road, things just started to completely snowball. So you, you'd think none of those factors would be in play at a neutral site. Certainly Auburn is going to have the advantage. Um, of having a great crowd, Arkansas will have a great crowd there as well because they're you know, got a great basketball fan base. But you know that'll be it, it'll be a true neutral site. It'll really probably feel it'll feel a lot like an NCAA tournament game, um, especially because both teams are you know going to really gain from this one. What's funny, Mark, and I've talked about this a couple times over the past like week or so. You mentioned feast or famine in the SEC tournament. They've won a game in the tournament in the SEC tournament twice under Bruce Pearl. All the other seasons, they haven't won a game there. But when they win a game, they won three games in his very first season. And then the final four year, they went all the way and won it. Every other season, they haven't won a single game in the SC tournament. So there's precedent to think if they win at least one game, maybe they can go on a run. If they only won like one game and then and then lost the second round to AM this year, it'd be the first time that's ever happened. And so certainly I think that's a trend, Bruce Pearl wants to turn around because you know they they really like you said it's just been completely feast or famine either they either they do really really well and like like his first season you're thinking like oh my gosh is this team going to play its way into the into the tournament and win the whole thing and then of course the the final four year they were just completely streaking um so let's talk a little bit about about their path and, and their side of the bracket we've talked a good bit about a and um let's see if i can pull us up here with the bracket there we go um you know so so i think you know the most desirable top four seed um certainly was missouri it's probably gonna be missouri for anybody for auburn you would definitely want to play missouri because because you destroyed them um but they're not on your side of the bracket so if auburn advances to uh if auburn advances to friday if they win if they win against arkansas they'll play the two seed which is texas a&m and i was looking this up this morning mark um it's five or six i think six times in bruce pearl's tenure um you know, a team has had an opportunity to beat auburn three times in a season Five times it's happened because of a rematch in the SC tournament. And then the only other time was Kentucky when they played them in the Elite Eight. Nobody's ever done it. Nobody is, nobody's been able to beat a Bruce Pearl Auburn team three times in a season. Could Buzz Williams be the first coach to do that? I'm not sure if it's ever happened in Bruce Pearl's career either. It's it, To me, I, I look at AM, what are they, they 17 and three since Christmas or something like that? I mean, they're playing fantastic. But to play devil's advocate, Mark, 
it's hard to beat somebody three times in a season. Yeah, Auburn doesn't want to see Buzz Williams in AM because he they've had they've had Bruce's number, but at the same time, you've got to think Auburn would have a good chance to win to win a third game. I'm just not sure I could I could see them going three and zero against the Tigers in 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 one season. Yeah, the first game, like you mentioned, uh, Texas A and M came out unbelievably hot, shooting three points uh, at Neville Arena, and then out at Texas A and M in the rematch, it was sort of. There's been a, several games this year that Auburn's that was not uh, not the beneficiary of uh, even-handed officiating, and uh, I thought that game out at Texas A&M was one of those. There was a huge discrepancy um, in some of the calls and ended up Auburn losing a, a close game out there. So, you know, if the game is called, if Auburn advances uh, to play Texas A&M and the game is called like the one was Saturday uh, against Tennessee, which I thought the officials weren't perfect, but I thought it was an evenly called game on both sides. I don't think either uh, coach had a whole lot to complain about. And, uh, then Auburn will certainly have a chance to beat Texas A&M if they get that far. Um, a lot of things will have to go well for Auburn because, you know, Texas A&M's guards are playing extremely well right now, just about as well as any guards group in the SEC. So that'll be something to watch. And, you know, what they did against Alabama uh, Saturday was was impressive. So uh, it's it, – Auburn's got – it's got some big challenges ahead. And, uh, uh, you know, no classes this week at Auburn. So players can totally focus on basketball this week and uh, and see if they can get up to uh, Nashville and uh, play like they did on Saturday against Tennessee. If they do that, it's going to be a very interesting game against Arkansas, Nathan. Yeah, and, and play like they have the better part of the last month and just, you know, be able to close out a game. They've played so well against quality opponents. They are the only team in this year's field besides Missouri in the SEC tournament um, that has an opportunity to play two straight top 25 net teams to start things out. So, again, at the end of the day, as you're looking at the SEC tournament, what it's about this year for Auburn is just win as many as you can. If you lose and go home because of that draw, it's really not the end of the world. Um, it, it, they're, they've probably already done enough it really seems like unless there's like some crazy you know amount of bids stolen from from you know low major conferences it, it really seems like they've probably done enough to get in the field you'll get projections right now like they're already eight eight nine seed like we talked about so they'd have to drop a couple more seed lines and, and losing to the number 18 team in the net arkansas is is probably not going to do that to you but at the same time you know go in there win one that'd be great win two that'd be fantastic maybe you can move up like a whole seed line if you beat them and texas a&m of course, you're looking at it here. It would probably be Kentucky on Saturday. Um, give you know, give Vanderbilt credit. Vanderbilt's been great this season, and they will be playing. They are the team, them and Mississippi State, that are going to be kind of fighting for their tournament lives. Um, and it's you know, it's in Nashville. You never know. Maybe maybe Vanderbilt could go on a run here. But I just I struggle to see them beating Kentucky twice in like the span of two weeks. Um, so Kentucky probably awaits you on Saturday if you're if you're Auburn and you can make it that far. That's a really tough draw. That's a really tough ask again. But again, same time, just go in there and win as many games um, as you can. And so um, I'm really excited to to get up there. It's crazy, Mark, that this team hasn't played a game at the SEC tournament in Nashville since they won the whole thing because it was canceled. And then you had the postseason ban and then you had the tournament in Tampa. So they they haven't played on that floor. Not, not even won a game. They haven't played on that floor in Nashville um, since they won the whole thing. So maybe they'll be able to carry over a little bit of mojo from the last <laughs> the last yeah, time I they thought that team that um, went up to Nashville and didn't get to play because of the, uh, uh, the season being canceled I thought that team was primed they were ready to make yeah. a run in the SEC they were going to be a handful in the NCAA yeah they were two seed in 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 the NCAA tournament so you kind of liked that that side of their bracket um and their last game they played they beat the tar out of Tennessee in uh in Knoxville and they were just a defensive just nightmare to go <laughs> to go against uh, to go against Isaac Okoro and, and that veteran team. Um, yeah, man, that would have been that's you know what could have been that that would have been a really fun team to to follow along in the NCAA tournament. But uh, you know this team has an opportunity to do that as well. I think a lot of Auburn fans are pretty excited about uh, after after the Tennessee game on Saturday to to see their team 
in March Madness yet again, we think. 95, 96% chance. You can really bolster that. Certainly with a win over Arkansas, you'd be like, if it's not already, lock it, stamp it, just everything. Go ahead and send it off. Um, so we're really excited to go to Nashville and uh, and cover it for you guys. Me and Mark will be there um, for as long as Auburn is. We'll be there on Wednesday bringing you guys some updates from, uh, from an open practice. Um, we'll talk to players on Wednesday in the locker room. And so uh, that's always it's always a good time. I've loved I've loved going to the SC tournament the past few years and uh, excited for it this year. So thank you guys so much for listening today to this episode of the Auburn Undercover podcast. If you guys enjoyed it, go leave us a five star review. The bumper music is by Beats by Mordecai. You guys can follow him, Twitter, SoundCloud, and Instagram. And until the next episode where we will probably be talking to you guys from Nashville, we will see you guys later. Everybody have a great start to your week.